You know, the most important thing for, for me for lighting is to obviously see the performer mm. and, and, and help the performer carry across what the mood is um, or the subtext and, and, and obviously enhances the set and the costumes and the makeup. Um, yeah, so lighting is very, very important, but I don't, I never th want to push my vision oh, yeah. or something on, on, on the director. Good afternoon, Quivers. It's so great to meet you here on Zoom. Good to meet you too, Petra. So you're a lighting designer in South Africa? Yes, I'm a lighting designer and also technical production manager. So I'm on the creative side and on the logistical side of productions, which really helped my career because, you know, there's only so many lighting jobs going in South Africa. Um, and in a lot of the productions that I lived, especially the overseas traveling productions, I would also do all the logistics, you know, of getting the set over and doing the lighting and the sound and everything on that side. And then I also normally put the, the technical team together. Okay. So, and you know, and, and you, of course, because you're a lighting designer, understand all the logistics behind... Yes. A production yes. like that. You know. Great, yes, yeah. And because I've been very fortunate in my career to travel a lot with South African productions, you know, you, you get to understand how different theatres work and the protocols in different theatre and the, the different equipment, because most countries have different lighting equipment, different sound equipment, and the process, the production process are different in basically each country. Um, so, yeah, with the travelling, I've learned really a lot about that well that's wonderful but now talk about your lighting design because i haven't spoken to really to a lighting <laughs> designer yet and i was oh, really? thinking okay. about that yeah no because i was okay. really thinking about the you know we see the performance always but we don't realize all these things that happen in the background and and behind the stage and uh and and also that lighting plays such an important role also in the whole, not just the, the production itself, but in telling the story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I agree with you. Um, and that, actually, that's what brought me to lighting design. It was never my intent to become a lighting designer. That all happened by accident, really. Um, but as soon as I discovered I have the eye for light, because I've always liked light and how light works. And as you say, how lighting contributes to the storytelling. Um, and very often people think that, you know, a good lighting design is a lighting design with plenty of lights and the most equipment, but it can be the simplest production with few lights, but the lighting design still makes the story of contribute to the story in a massive way. And you said you, you got into lighting design by accident. Um, what, uh, when did you actually, uh, Start when I, when thinking when you start, the lighting or, or uh, you know, where, how did your career start? So I went to study uh, theatre arts at Stellenbosch University. At that point, to become a writer, I wanted to become a playwright. And uh, in your first year back then, you still had to do all the different models. So you had to do movement and acting and playwriting and technical aspects like lighting and sound and all of that. And my mentor at that point, um, uh, Emil uh, Ocamp, um, urgently needed somebody who didn't have a fear of heights. So he came to us and said, I need somebody to, we call it a taller scope. It's a big ladder that goes up very high on wheels. And I've got no uh, fear of heights. And so I got up the ladder to help focusing. And um, he obviously liked what I did. And then from then on, I just started getting more and more involved. And I don't know of it, uh, if you know of it, um, the Oda Libertas Amphitheater, just oh, outside yeah, yeah. of Bosch. Um, Marita Channel, who's now retired, um, was also look, looking for a technician. So literally from my end of my second year, I started working there. 
Um, and, you know, of course, it's a festival theatre. We, or seasonal theatre, we do one production after the next. So for literally, for all the years of my study and when I started lecturing at Stellenbosch, I did every season and back-to-back -back productions. And that's really where I discovered my true passion of lighting and, and, and the te technical aspects. Yeah, and it's also because you're involved all the time, so you learn every time, I suppose, so, with every production that you do. Yes, yeah, and also as technology advanced over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started, there was no what we call now intelligent lights, you know, computerized lights. I mean, it was still literally a manual desk that you sat behind. You couldn't program a desk. And now everything is um, uh, 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 computerized, even the lights. And so you, the, the lighting style also had to adapt quite a bit. Um, but as I said, I've been fortunate to, to have a lot of work. Um, so yeah, it kept you on, or it kept me on my toes. Well, you say now the lighting style changed. Do you think, uh, do you see a big change in when it was still sort of more manual? Do you think there are something that got lost in this process of having it so computerized? Um, sure. I get asked that question quite often. Um, yeah, it did change, not so much in terms of the style of lighting, because you can still do the same, you can still light a scene in the same way. It's just the equipment that's that's different. Okay. Uh, so you have to get to know the equipment and how they can still give you the same effect that or, or lighting state that we had 30 years ago. The upside of it is that it's... Um, much quicker now to light because you know back when I started, you know, you had say 20 lights in your rig and there were fixed lights and fixed focus. Um, so you could only do so much. But nowadays with all the intelligent lights, they can move around, up, down, change color, um, so big spectrum of color, go bigger, go smaller. Um, so it speeds up the lighting process very much and also obviously over the years with finances you know I started you know we had sometimes up to three weeks in the theater just focusing on lighting and nowadays if you get three days you're very lucky uh, yeah. but the computerized equipment makes it much quicker as well but so the style did get a bit different in its look um, but it's it's yeah it's still we can still do good lighting design mm -hmm. Um, now tell me tell me about the creative process when a lighting designer when you get involved in a production uh how much input do you have so i suppose the the director wants a specific idea and and how much do you collaborate in that sense um it really depends on 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 the director sometimes you work with a, a director that knows exactly what she or she wants they can tell you in on this scene, this is the effect that I want, or this is the mood that I want. And they can be very precise. And you almost create the picture that they have in, in the, the head. Other directors say, Quibus, I leave this entirely up to you. And then obviously, you know, you read the script and you watch the rehearsals and obviously speak a lot to the set design to the set designer. A lot of set designers are very much involved with the lighting process as well. The opposite, you know, the influence the the colors on stage and oh, yeah. how costumes react to light and even makeup. So it is a collaboration um, between the various designers and the director. Um, but as I said, it's I prefer a director that um, contributes mm -hmm. so that I can get into the head to see the picture that they want and obviously over the years you know, with directors that i worked like with christine krauser um she was the previous artistic director of cape town opera um christine knows we almost don't even have to discuss the lighting i know exactly what she wants and she knows that i can deliver that and uh obviously you know she always has the We'll say, oh, because I don't like that, or this is too dark, or I don't like the color. So it is a 
collaboration between the director and the set designer and the costume designer. And yeah, but it's it's always a different process. Always a different process. And of course, with you know, every new production. Um, oh, yeah. Any, yeah. So and, do you and, prefer do you prefer working with the same director so that you sort of get to know them or is it also something for you to do complete completely something new a challenge i i, I do like both i do okay. like both um it's quite interesting we've actually discussed it quite recently because you know as time progresses there's new directors coming into in in in, 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 in into the industry and uh, with different training and uh, younger than me and all of that. And it, I find that fascinating because people do l look at things differently and, you know, directing styles have changed. Um, it's uh, but as, you, as long as one is able to communicate um, uh, to get to the, because at the end of the day, you all want a successful production. So the collab collaboration is very important for me. Mm. But fortunately, once you've got to know a director, it, it makes the process much easier because you're on the same page from from day one, so to mm. speak. Mm. So do you have the confidence to go to a director and say, listen, I think this lighting, you know, if you really think this is not working or do you just leave it? <laughs> Depends on the director. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I fortunately have never been in this situation where I went like, no, I don't like this. Oh, yeah. But what yeah. I keep on saying when I work with a new director and, and I can only speak for myself, I always say to a director, I'm a tool in the director's hand. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't see, um, even to this day, like, people call me a lighting designer. It's just like, I just do what I love. I know there's a creative aspect to it. Yeah. Um, but it's a, a collaboration and yeah, to, to, to get to where we want to be. Yeah, so I but, prefer both, to be quite honest. <laughs> but now this is actually a very good example of how science and art um, come together because, because light is, it's science, you know, and, and you are playing with light or creating with light. Um, so do do you have it's, you have a very technical you have to have this very technical the skills and also the the knowledge of lighting uh, for yes. you was this also were you good in science at school oh no, no, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> no i wasn't good with science but i was always very, very practical um okay. so i mean there is a scientific part to lighting, but it's 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 very organic as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of the science, it's more the, the way we light now with the what we call the intelligent lights, mm -hmm. the computerized lighting. So you and have to understand the science part of that. Um, uh, but once you understand that, the basic lighting techniques still apply. Mm -hmm. um, if I uh, teach, you know, it, it, all, it boils down to the same thing. You know, the most important thing of, for, for me for lighting is to obviously see the performer mm. and, and, and help the performer carry across what the mood is um, or the subjects and, and, and obviously enhances the set and the costumes and the makeup. Um, yeah, so lighting is very, very important, but I don't I never want to push my vision oh, yeah. or something on, on, on the director. I, yeah. I take my key from the director. Sometimes directors leave it all to you, which I also mm. don't mind. Um, yeah. It's on opening night, they say, oh, I would like to change this and that and this and that. Chapman's. <laughs> 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 Get everybody stressed out. <laughs> but now um, you do also different you do opera and and also but you also do stage or drama productions because i saw you you won an award for um cry the beloved country in That's in 2004 yeah. yeah yes um yes i've been fortunate I, I, like i said i studied theater um and purely by accident i got involved with opera lighting uh because the, the the lighting designer for the opera 
was already decided on, but unfortunately he fell ill. Oh, and there was nobody okay. else available. <laughs> Goodness, can you help us? And oh, right. <laughs> quite honest, I grew up with um, music in, in, in my family, and only on Sundays would we like to uh, listen to classical music. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen an opera before. I worked on the, the same one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was captivated again about the, the scale of the storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm yeah, very draw, drawn to that because it's got a huge influence. Yeah, but is it much? It's well, I mean, it's a lot of uh, costumes and things more than in a in a in a drama yes. production, for example. Yes. So that, that uh, affects your your creative, the creative way of lighting. Then, in a sense, because the scale is much bigger normally oh, okay. um, with operas, the, the scale is you know is it's it's mm-hmm. huge. And with with, with theatre production, it is far more contained. But if you you mentioned Cry the Beloved Country, it, it's a big cast. I think we there was about fifteen people in the cast. So it's again a huge production, but on a smaller stage. It's, it's not in an opera house. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it's, the process but, is still exactly the same, so mm-hmm. to speak. But do you have a preference? No, not really. No. Oh, okay. As long as it's on on stage. Yes, the, the lighting opera. Like I mean, I've learned so much about opera and and uh, the different styles and you know different yeah. composers and all of that. But at the end, it, the, the lighting technique stays the same. It's just the scale that's much different. And yes, if that makes and sense. How much- yeah, how much does it differ from film? Um, you know, in in film, for example. Yeah. So okay, again, it's about the scale. I've never lit for theater, uh, uh, for uh, film or TV, but I'm very much fascinated about film lighting. We were actually up last night very late to watch the Golden Globes uh, come in, and uh, I'm a, uh, I love film. I love film. But um, the, the, the technique is different to theatre mm. lighting and the scale again okay. is very different. Yeah. Now, um, Kubis, tell me, what are the wishes for you for the future? Sure. The wishes for the future is to, to keep on working. Um, like I said, I've been very, very fortunate in my career up until COVID. And, you know, when COVID hit, everything closed down. I mean... Um, then in the second year of COVID, um, when they started opening up the theatres, I think for our very first production that we did then, I can't remember, I think it was Hansel and Gretel that we did, and um, there still had to be four seats in between each person oh, in the yeah. auditorium, like with um, Artscape Opera House, which seats 1,500. Uh, we were only allowed for the first couple of, performance 250 people in the auditorium so you've got this massive auditorium yeah. sitting um all over so so since then you know the industry here in south africa really took a knock financially due to covid and it's getting better now um but the yeah you know, the, the work is not as plentiful as it used to be um but I, I, yeah, so uh, my other passion is also teaching. So I've got a couple of teaching assignments coming up and then a couple of lighting projects, which I always say to people, I never say I've got the job until I've signed the contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are a couple of contracts on the table, um, but yeah, hopefully that will materialize this year. But now South Africa, you say, you know, you've been hit hard by COVID, but... Also, South Africa, there are um, not so many opportunities. Uh, I mean, there are not so many theatres and and not so much money into the arts than we would wish for. But uh, can you see positive things happening? Yes, definitely. I'm still very optimistic because the amount of talent that we have in this country and um, in the theatre industry and in the opera industry, you know, in the dance, the, there's so much talent. And uh, although the money is not always good uh, and and uh, the opportunity is not always uh, as many, uh, I don't think it will 
uh, it will definitely come back to the where we were pre-COVID. Um, yeah. So and with your production company, you also uh, see a bright future. Yes. No. Yeah, I have to because you know as I always said I don't see myself retiring. Um, I don't know if you know, but I relocated to Grayton um, about five years ago, and I recently moved back. But the moment I was in Grayton, people thought I went into retirement. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't retire at age 50, <laughs> but you know, fortunately I can do what I do. There's no retirement date. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, my but biggest, this, yeah. My biggest example always is um, we've got a very good uh, designer, Peter Cazale. I don't know if you know of him, but no, Peter no. is now in his early 90s and he's still working, mm. you know, which is, yeah, that's but, what I want. Yeah, I think this is, and, and I think that keeps you young, you know, because I see my dad as well. My da dad also, uh, he he doesn't want to retire, but he, that's, he stays fit and he stays, his mind stays young. And um, But that's also something about South Africans, you know, you, we just get on with things. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But that's very true. Um, yeah. I think we still have a very good work etiquette. Yeah. yeah. South African Absolutely. really work hard and you have to stay relevant and you know you can't um go into early retirement. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> Could you tell me that uh, do you have any interesting stories about your lighting design or that happened on stage? Um yo Petra, I've got many, many <laughs> over the years accumulated quite a few stories. Mm -hmm. Um but the one is <laughs> what well, I, I often still think about it. So, as I said, I started out lighting theater mostly. And on theater, nobody, I mean, the lighting designer gets credit in the program. And obviously, you know, you get a, a, a reputation. But on opening night or in any performance, the creative team in theater very, very seldom goes on stage for, for bows. Um, but in opera, it's it's quite big uh, to, to to do that, and um, so on opening night, the whole creative team would come on up on stage for bars. And um, I've, like I mentioned to you before, I'm not very good on stage. I've never been or in front of a camera. And when they said, "Well, after the show, please come backstage because you have to go and take your bow," and I said, "No, no, no, that's fine. I don't have to." They said, "No, no, no. The director and the company is going to." Uh, find it insulting if you do not do that. So I said, okay, I will do it. And this was at Artscope Opera House, and curtain comes down, and singers take their bows, and then conductor takes the bows, and the director goes on, take the bow, and the set designer went on, take the bow, and I was sent on, and I stood there, and I completely froze. <laughs> and fortunately, my very good friend, Juanita, was the stage manager. And she just realized that I froze and they have to bring in the curtain to get me <laughs> off stage. So you so, didn't bow. I just did the <laughs> <laughs> complete, complete stage fright. And they still teach me to do this. And now it's much better. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I'm still very awkward with it, but it's 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 much better. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. that's amazing you, you should have do the jazz hands <laughs> <laughs> see and how quickly they bring that curtain down <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. That's, yeah but that but it just shows you you're so used to working behind the scenes that yeah. suddenly now when you're in the spotlight you you like to put other people in the spotlight, and when you're on the spotlight, you freeze up. Completely. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to add one little story to that one. No, no. Um, uh, one of my favorite directors to work with is Stephen Stead, uh, based in Joe, but I did quite a few opera productions with him. And we also did one just um, uh, after uh, lockdown, um, COVID. Um, uh, now the name is completely. Cosi van Tutti. We did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And on opening night, again walked on, and you know I was, I'm much better now, but I I'm not myself. Mm -hmm. And he just finished his bow, 
and I was skewed on. And for some reason, I just kept walking and I walked right into him. <laughs> he was a bit angry. <laughs> He no, stole his shine. <laughs> it's sticky thunder, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's my funny no, story. Was, I, I, you convinced me you, you're not one for the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and very often, uh, there's a very, uh, it's passed away now, a, a very famous Afrikaans actor, Quibus Rousseau. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, and very often people, because the name Kubis Rousseau all of a sudden sounds very familiar. And they said, but they realize that I'm too young, but he's also got a son, Kubis, also the, and people would ask me, so are you Kubis Rousseau's son? I said, no, I'm I'm, I'm a different Kubis Rousseau. Okay. Not the actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely not the actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Kubis, this was so great to talk to you. It was wonderful talking to you as well. Thank you for sh shining some light on lighting design. <laughs> I can keep on talking for hours, I promise you. <laughs> oh, well, very nice you. Yeah, you've done so many uh, wonderful projects, and um, and I, I would love to come and and see one day behind the scenes, you know, oh, how yes. it works and 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 what you're doing because that I find it really interesting. Well, hopefully, I'll be in Vienna, Vienna quite soon, and I'll definitely let I, you know. <laughs> Fingers crossed, yes. <laughs> okay, okay Kubis, have Gina. a lovely have a lovely rest of the afternoon and let me know when you're in Vienna. Will do. Thank you, Pedro. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs>